So now the people have understood that saving the forest is also for saving their own future. My name is Dominic Warre. I am a member of the managing board here at the World Economic Forum, and it's my delight and privilege uh, to welcome you to this discussion, which is a briefing about a major initiative that has been launched here at Davos called the Trillion Trees Platform, or 1T.org. 1T.org exists to serve the global community of actors committed to contributing to the goal of growing, restoring, and conserving one trillion trees worldwide by 2030. It's a very, very important initiative in the broader issue of tackling climate change, the climate emergency that we face. We know we have to deal with the industry transition, the energy and urban transition, transforming our financial system, but we also know that nature-based solutions, particularly the restoration of nature, is a key part of this jigsaw, and that is exactly what 1T.org is going to tackle. We have a fabulous panel um, lined up to provide some thoughts and inspiration from us. We, I, I don't think we could have brought together such a spectacular group of people. Um, so it's my absolute delight to, first of all, introduce you to Ivan Duque, who is the president of Colombia. Um, Mr. President, um, the importance of the restoration conservation agenda in the battle to tackle climate change, 1T.org, and your viewpoints from a Colombian perspective. Well, first of all, thank you so much. It is a great pleasure for me to be here again in the World Economic Forum. I want to express my gratitude to all the distinguished members of this panel to participate and to lead this important initiative on One Trillion Trees. Let me just uh, first say that the biggest challenge of our time is climate change. And we will not be successful facing climate change until we do not defeat deforestation around the globe. And uh, Colombia sees this initiative as a very important milestone. We consider that if we make the whole world conscious about reforestation, and about planting and protecting the ecosystems, we can really make a big, a big change. Colombia has 50% of the world paramos. Colombia has 35% of its territory as Amazonic land. And we have 50% of our territory in tropical jungle. But we have seen deforestation taking place a long time. And we want to make a difference with a big goal. We want to plant 180 million trees by August 2022. Wow. Since we began our administration, we've gotten to plant something close to 24.7 million trees. This year, we expect to get 60 million more and reach this target by 2022. We want to call local governments and the whole environmental agencies at the local level to lead this initiative. So we consider that our contribution to the One Trillion Trees initiative is based on this goal. And we want the whole Colombian society to embrace this goal. And last but not least, we have decided to build better institutions to fight deforestation. We created the National Council Against Deforestation last year. And we also launched the Artemis campaign, a campaign that is aimed to fight the criminals who are destroying the Amazonic land or who are having a, an illegal trade of wood. And we believe that if we combine the efforts of planting and generating a social conscience uh, for, for reforestation, and if we fight the criminality that is surrounding uh, many different ecosystems in the world, we will be more effective. So I see this initiative as a very important one. I am very glad that the World Economic Forum has taken a lead. And I also want to express that having private sector leaders such as you, Mark, having a lot of, uh, of, uh, of leadership and promoting public-private partnerships is very important. So we embrace our, uh, our cause to participate in the initiative. And yes, 
We believe that by 2022, with 180 million trees planted in Colombia, we'll be a substantial leader, regionally speaking, so that this initiative can accomplish its goal by 2030. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, that's a very, very compelling um, case that's been made out for the uh, restoration, conservation, um, and uh, growing of uh, the tree target towards 1T.org. Uh, you mentioned the private sector. Um, Mark Benioff, uh, TO Chairman, Salesforce.com. Uh, Why would uh, companies uh, be interested and involved in this? It sounds like this should be something um, for uh, NGOs and, 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 and governments, not companies. Well, we are certainly uh, at a time of a planetary emergency. Uh, we realize that our planet is getting warmer and we need to find ways and solutions that we are going to all become number one carbon uh, net zero and uh, reduce emissions. And number two, we have to sequester or eliminate the carbon that has been emitted into the atmosphere. Um, human beings are very good at moving carbon around. And we can see what we've done. We've moved it from the ground and into the atmosphere, from the ocean and the atmosphere, and from the trees into the atmosphere. And um, we need to get um, uh, a big eye on our forests so that we can use them to sequester uh, this carbon. I want to just start by telling you a story, which is we were in the San Francisco Climate uh, Conference, and Jane Goodall was there. And we're telling her all the good work that the World Economic Forum and Dominic and uh, Doug McCauley's here with the University of California, Santa Barbara, are doing with the oceans. And she said, well, it's very nice what you're doing for the oceans, but what are you doing for the forests? <laughs> and I didn't have an answer. I didn't know what to say. And it had it in my mind, though, that it was a loop, that I was needed to have something to say. And, then I want to give thanks to Al Gore, who's not here, but is a critical part of this, because at our World Economic Forum trustee meeting in August in Geneva, he was there talking about the incredible research <coughs> done at ETH University right here in Zurich by Tom Crowther. Tom, would you just stand up and be recognized? Tom did the incredible work for the Trillion Tree Vision. His team is doing extraordinary uh, things and took artificial intelligence and low-hanging satellites and other fourth industrial revolution technologies and is showing us where these trillion trees are going and also the amount of carbon that they can sequester and the mathematical models and environmental models. And uh, the research was then published in many scientific journals, including Scientific American, Science, and others. And Al Gore said, have you seen this research from Tom Crowther? And I was like, no, I haven't. He's like, about the forests. And I said, well, I'm actually thinking about the forest because I was just with Jane. And then basically that same day, Doug McCauley emailed me and said, well, have you seen Tom Crowther's research? And I said, no, I haven't, but Al Gore just mentioned it. And when I said it, I said, what? One trillion trees will sequester more than 200 gigatons of carbon. We have to get on this right now. Who's working on this? And I, I, I was very fortunate to have a great relationship with Dominic. And I said, Dominic, what about the World Economic Forum? And I just want to thank Klaus Schwab, who then fully embraced this idea. And we um, really have this now underway with a full team that's going to be staffed in Geneva, working this, working with governments. Thank you, President Duque, for your outstanding leadership. Also, I would like to thank President Trump, who's also committed to uh, participate in the One Trillion Tree campaign. And I expect the United States to commit to between 50 and 100 billion trees. So that research is being done by the Department of the Interior right now. And I expect that um, uh, to uh, get finalized, hopefully in the next few months and moving ahead uh, there. I, I really want to thank the World Economic Forum because I don't think there is another organization on the planet that actually could take this research that's, you know, coincidentally, was done just a couple miles from here, and start to execute this and to be able to convene the world leaders. Um, it's, this is such an important time. We are at a, um, a moment in history where all of us need to think about what does the future look like. And I know that planting a trillion trees sounds daunting. Um, but there used to be six trillion trees on Earth. Now there is three trillion. 
so we should be able to get another trillion back. Well, I'd like two trillion. I guess I want them all back, Tom. How about all six trillion? That would have a huge impact on, um, on our uh, environment. And we've already seen interest from two to 300 companies just in 24 hours to join our 1T.org program. And Tom and I can talk about that. You can get more research at, and understand what we're doing at 1T.org. And, um, uh, you know, who's against the trees? I mean, the tree, everyone's for the trees. The trees are a bipartisan issue. Everybody's pro-tree. I haven't met any anti-tree people yet. So that's very good. So, Jane, you've done a great job. And, and um, every one of us can join this movement. And every one of us can make a commitment to plant trees, whether it's individually, or organizationally, whether it's a government, whether it's a nonprofit, an NGO, whether it is a, a business, Salesforce is committing to planting 100 million trees over the next 10 years. That's our opening uh, entree into this. I hope it will be much, much larger. And I think it's also a great example of stakeholder capitalism, which is something that we're promoting here at the World Economic Forum's 50th anniversary. The idea that businesses have to be more than just their shareholders. They must be about all stakeholders, including their employees, their customers, partners, their local communities, their schools, and certainly the planet and our forests and our environment is a key stakeholder for every business. So we all have to be thinking about this. So thank you for having me, and I'm so excited for uh, this initiative. Brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Mark Benioff. Um, now, the other interesting thing about this, of course, is people have been mobilizing communities and indigenous groups and uh, local societies engaged in these sorts of areas. So there's an enormous potential to draw together into the 1T.org platform an enormous amount of experience at indigenous peoples and the community level. And if I'd like to, I could turn to Hindu Umanu Ibrahim, who's the president of the Association for Indigenous Women um, and the, from the People's Republic of Chad. So um, almost from the other side of the, of the coin here, we've heard from um, major government leaders and major international corporations. Um, this effort uh, to uh, restore, conserve, and grow a trillion trees by the end of a decade is that something that um, is impactful and interesting from the communities and indigenous peoples that you work with? And how, how is that? Thank you very much. Uh, for indigenous peoples, forest trees is not only like a throne of tree or leaf. It's our home. It's our food. It's our medicine. It's our life. It is our knowledge. It is our school. So when we hear about the initiative of restoring the forest ecosystem planting a trillion of trees, we are the first one who are very excited about it. Because we think finally the solution is coming into the tables and that what we are expecting, we cannot wait for that for 2050. It's starting now and that's what we want. But the initiative must include several things. One of them is how indigenous peoples and people who are living in forests can be the partners and the first stakeholders who can restore this forest. For us, it's not just a planting a tree, as I said. It's all the ecosystem who live with it. It's the bears who can sit in each tree. It's the flowers of the trees that can be eaten by the insect. And it's not the shell only, but it is the value of these trees as ecological and spiritual way to give us back our identity that we are losing because of the climate change. So respecting the right of indigenous peoples, recognizing the land rights who can help the indigenous communities to rebuild the forest that they have in a different landscape, Africa, Asia, Latin America, but all the world species. And also, using not only the technology, we know that technology is very important, it can fasten the solutions, but we do have the most fastened solution who make the proof for the centuries, the indigenous people's traditional knowledge. And I saw one example in Colombia, Mr. President, who was very excellent last year in the Tropical Forest Alliance 2020. Mm -hmm. I went to visit indigenous communities from my colleague who are here in the room, Carol, 
so they have the primary forest where they create a corridor to the planting forest, where the species can navigate between the primary and the secondary, who can restore the ecosystem with all the way that we want. They have them on nursery where they know the indigenous species to get replant. So that's the project we want. And if we go in the way of indigenous peoples and we involve them, we are going to have not only tree planting, but life and livelihood of the peoples, the socials, and then the living in harmony with the nature who can be restored. It's from the women, from the children, but from the next seven generation that we are looking on it. So this project Project we want. We really welcome it and we look it forward to work with the private sectors, with the companies, with the governments who are engaged as Colombia here, but all African government, all Latin American, even Siberia, who is also burning. So don't forget the other forests. We have the three tropical forests, but we have also the secondary forest in Savannah, in Sahel, where we can mitigate the conflict between communities that are fighting just to get access to the resources. So it will, it will be a big movement of this decade, and we are really can't wait to see the impact that is can change in our life. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the, the implications of this is far more than um, planting a tree. If you think about the kind of spiritual, the um, cultural identity and the relationship between uh, people in the land and our changing climate, that movement issue is a very, very interesting one that was just mentioned there. The movements that will be required to mobilize so many people from so many different parts of the world to take this on. Um, and that's why we're delighted to have Sadhguru um, with us. Um, um, who's the founder of the Isha uh, Foundation. And uh, you, sir, um, have um, been able to establish mass movements, um, perhaps by referring to trees as, as, as almost the lungs of, of, of people and such, I understand. Can you tell us about how you've managed to create such movements from your perspective? Good morning, everyone. Well, uh, it's exciting to see that the world is beginning to think in terms of trees. Because without putting soil under shade, at least 50 to 60 percent of the planet's soil should go under shade. Without that, there is no ecosystem uh, recovery. It will not happen. So trillion trees is not going to do that, but definitely it's an inspiring number to go for. But we also need to understand we never plant trees. We either plant seeds or saplings. Before we call it a tree, it'll take six to ten years. That's when it becomes a tree. So these six to ten years, as the president uh, pointed out, and battling the criminals, well, well, in a certain country you can call them criminals, but in the rest of the world they're successful businesses. So uh, the timber that's sold around the planet is largely illegal, but many nations buy it, and things are happening about it. So timber is a lucrative item. So when it is so, it is very important that it becomes an economic process for the people. So this is what we have done in southern India, where right now there's a project to involve uh, five million farmers to grow timber in their lands as uh, part of agroforestry, which includes other crops in between. It is tree cultivation with crops, and crops come out much better, the nutritional values are better, the soil recovers, the water tables come up. And above all, there is a long-term crop on the land. One of the major challenges right now in India for us is, it is estimated in the next 10 years, 220 million people will migrate to cities. No city in the country is geared to handle that kind of population. In the rest of the world, it is estimated 1.6 billion people will migrate. But one simple way to stop this before we do many other things which need to be done is, when farmers have long-term crops on their land, they are not going to go away anywhere because there is investment standing there and growing. By the day, money is growing on the land, they are not going to go away. So it's extremely important that as you're doing it in uh, wastelands and lands that need to be recovered, it's very important agricultural lands must get back trees. And this will make a huge difference because in the last 25 years, in many parts of the world, the nutritional value of the foods that we eat has come down by 40 percent. 
If this has to be recovered, trees have to come back on the farm. And only if there are long-term crops, there is an assurance people who are living on the land will continue to live on the land and not end up in a city slum somewhere. So, like how we got people <laughs> into this, well, uh, when I saw that uh, people had no connection with the tree, and trees had gone long time ago, and tree is just a word in people's minds. So I got... I trained a few thousand people to demonstrate this to millions of people across South India. We made people sit with eyes closed, and made them breathe, and set up a certain process where your exhalation is tree's inhalation, tree's exhalation is your inhalation. Once they felt this, you can't stop them planting trees because one half of your breathing apparatus is hanging out there on the tree. <laughs> Once people felt this, you just can't stop it. So this connect is very needed because it will take 15, 20 years to get a tree to a reasonable size. But in one afternoon, it can be cut and taken away. And don't be assured that you you are going to stop it with the police or security or this or that because it's too lucrative, you're not going to stop it. Like you're not able to stop drugs on the planet, you will not be able to stop timber trade because anyway they will go. So people need timber. Timber needs to become an agricultural produce. We should stop looking at timber as forest produce. Forests on the planet have reached a point where it cannot take any more exploitation. We have used it sufficiently, but it cannot take any more exploitation. Timber has to become an agricultural produce. Do we have land to do this? We definitely have. 51 million square kilometers of land is under agricultural tilling right now. And out of this, 40 million uh, square, feet, uh, square kilometers are used for raising animals or their food. If we push right now super athletes on the planet, your Tom Brady, Lionel Messi, Virat Kohli, all people who have 100 million following, they are all turned vegetarian. This is a good time. If we push back meat consumption by 50%, you will have 20 million square kilometers of agricultural land. Why agricultural land is important is the rate of survival will be much better when it's on the private land. Our rate of survival is over 90%, simply because it's on private land, individual farmer is taking care of it, and it is his commerce. He's not seeing it as saving the planet. We never talk to the farmer about saving the planet. It is just that to enhance his economic condition, this is being done. And that's the best way to do it. If we do not marry economy and ecology, economy will win hands down. Sadhguru, that's an excellent way to then that we work to marry the ecology and the economy. So this is again the complexity and the interest in the space. Um, Dr. Jane Goodall, who absolutely needs no introduction, you've been listening to this um, and uh, why to close us out does uh, the one seed.org initiative which is a fundamental piece of the jigsaw to tackle climate change alongside the industry transition, the energy transition, the financial transition. Um, tell us why this is um, an important and interesting initiative for you and the things that you would like to see it do um, over the course of its lifetime. Okay, how many minutes do I have? Um, you've got a couple of minutes to close us out. A minutes? A couple of minutes, minutes and there's time for the call. Well, okay, so it, it's obviously very fascinating for me to be here to listen to all the speakers on this panel. And thank you, Mark, for acknowledging that I helped to bring you around to my beloved trees. <laughs> so I've always loved trees. The reason I left the chimpanzee research at Gombe was when I realized that right across Africa, forests were disappearing and chimp numbers were dropping. And when I flew over my tiny Gombe National Park, it had been part of the great equatorial forest belt. But when I looked down in 1990, it was a tiny island surrounded by completely bare hills. And this is when it hit me. If we don't work with the people who are cutting down the trees, even on the steep slopes, because they're desperate to grow food for their families, then we'll, we'll never be able to even try and save the chimpanzees. So my involvement has been through a program called Take Care or Takari. And it's been so successful that we work with 104 villagers throughout the whole chimpanzee range in Tanzania. And it's a very holistic program working with, with water, uh, water management programs and women and girls' education 
and all of this. So now the people have understood that saving the forest is also for saving their own future. So right at the beginning, as I was working on all of this and trying to raise money for it, I realized that all of this is absolutely wasted unless new generations grow up understanding some of the problems that we have brought about upon ourselves with the climate crisis. So I began a program called Roots and Shoots, uh, which began with 12 high school students in Tanzania. It's now in about 60 countries, uh, including India uh, and including Colombia. And it's got members in kindergarten, university, everything in between. One of the very first projects we did was tree nurseries, was planting trees. And the reason I think that this Trillion Tree Project is so exciting, people say to me all the time, what can I do? What's one thing I can do? You can plant a tree. And whether you plant the tree uh, in your own backyard or whether you pay to have trees planted in Tanzania, uh, or you, if it's urban or rural, you know, it's something you can do. And now I find with all of this amazing technology that's out there, which I don't begin to understand, but you can actually identify individual trees. So I, I'm, I changed the way that uh, animal behavior science was conducted by giving chimpanzees names. I was absolutely uh, castigated by the scientific community. I should have given them numbers. Well, what about naming trees? If you have a tree named for you, so our Roots and Shoots program just last year planted about five million trees around the world. And that's with very little support. If we had more uh, money coming in, we could plant many more. Five and a half million, are, are, you know, Roots and Shoots has guaranteed that this year alone. So, yeah, the, the, the Trillion Tree Project is exciting because everybody can get involved and whether it's communities on the ground that are so important, businesses, uh, politicians, political leaders, children, everybody. And if we have a tree in our name, we want that tree to live. And so, yes, I, I think the Trillion Tree Project is absolutely fantastic, and I congratulate everybody working on it. And, yeah. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Jane Goodall. Now, um, 1T.org is the platform. The mobilization will begin. You go there and you can express your interest. Um, I'm sure there are a few questions here. Um, we are quite uh, pressed for time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the room next door where most of the panelists can stay for a few minutes and take some questions. Some of the panelists have to stay here, obviously, for, um, and, and some people have got very pressed schedules. Um, but if you want to ask some questions, some of the panelists will go there because we're going to have to move this one out um, uh, to get another uh, very important uh, press briefing in. But to close, um, in terms of the platform that is 1T.org, uh, to plant, restore, and conserve those one trillion trees. Um, thank you so much, everyone, from this panel. Um, 30 seconds for 20 seconds. Go. Uh, as a part of recovery calling right now, with 5 million farmers, we are committed to plant uh, 4 point, I mean, 2.42 billion trees in one river basin, sequestering about 12 trillion liters of water. This could be done in various river basins to re revive rivers also. In India alone, with, uh, in collaboration with Trillion Trees, very easily we can scale this up to 50 to 60 billion trees across the country in river basins, all on private lands. This go. is important that it's on private lands because the survival rate is over 90%. Very thank you very there much. There we go. And we encourage more of that. So thank you very much. Just give us a round of applause for our panelists.